players entered this tournament. We are down to our final five. And Kevin there with 2.6 million in chips. He sat down as the, uh, the chip leader, but has been very consistent throughout this final table and pretty quiet too. So yeah, it was a pretty big loss. That, working, yeah. that last hand was a big loss, but it was a really tough spot. And got to give credit to Robert for making that big play. I don't think Kevin's going to be too upset but about folding that, even when he sees that he got bluffed. It would have been a pretty big hero call. Tony here in the hijack. He's got king nine. He'll pass. Eric with his king deuce also out of there in the cutoff. Robert on the button, queen seven. Oh, well, Robert's feeling a little energy from that last one. Thinking about opening up with a queen seven off. <laughs> and that he will. He's going up to 90,000. Kevin here in the small blind with pretty unattractive hand is going to let that one go. And Jake in the big blind, six deuce, also going to punt. And Robert's starting to feel it a little bit here. Yeah. 2.7 million for him now. Club WPT is giving you two chances this month to win your way into the 2020 WPT Choctaw Main Event, running May 15th through the 18th at the Choctaw Casino and Resort in Durant, Oklahoma, about 95 miles northeast of the Dallas-Fort Wayne Airport. This WPT event will be televised and has recently become a mainstay on the global World Poker Tour schedule. $6,000 WPT Choctaw Main Event VIP tournament package. So pretty cool stuff, man. Yeah, just an out hour outside of Dallas. That place is pretty cool. A huge casino, one of the biggest anywhere. It's almost like there's a lot of people in Texas that want to gamble. <laughs> yeah, there might be, yeah. <laughs> Funny how that works. Eric here looking at 7-6 off in the hijack. It's funny we all play Texas Hold'em, and you're not allowed to play it in Texas. Maybe. Maybe. Lived in uh, Houston for a little while and would regularly hear about them storming corporate clubs. And I'm like, <laughs> why? Oh, boy. Here we go, Tony. A couple of aces. Aces again. again. Tony's had kings and queens and aces and aces again. And he's managed to do something with it, too. He's chipped all the way up to 2.1 million now. And Robert the Razor here, as he has been so affectionately known for the last three whole hands. <laughs> Let's see what Tony does. Tony's been pretty good in these spots. Not overplaying the hand, you know, not, not giving it away. I, I wouldn't even be surprised just to see him flat it. And he's going to raise it up. Yeah, by a lot. So I like what he did there. He starts grabbing chips. He says the number right as the clock expires. So he didn't want to use this time bank button or his uh, time extension chips, his last remaining one. So he announced his bet right as the buzzer went off. I'm not sure why he wants to tell everyone when he has aces. He's a club, he's a heart. Well, that was a mighty honest thing for him to tell him. <laughs> hey, yeah, well cards. Seems like that'd be a pretty good competitive advantage. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> so part of the, it's a little bit uncomfortable that when you get to a TV table, the rail is a little bit higher for the TV cameras and the and the RFID uh, readers. So you have to really bend over to look at your cards, and uh, sometimes if you're not used to. If you're not used to it, yeah. Stuff, yeah. So it's it's nice of players to tell tell another player you're not looking at your cards right. Kevin here in the cutoff. <coughs> King Jack offsuit. Eighty, 80 thousand. Jake's gonna Fold. jump out of the way. Was I winning? Was aces new? Fold. Eric with his king jack as well. Tony continues his trash talk of Jake. Yes, yeah, yeah. We'll take that to his grave. <laughs> Yeah, he's never going to forget that, I don't think. Even for all the aces. So let's see if somebody can outplay the other identical hands. King on the flop. 
That usually comes up when neither player has anything, since they both have something. It's just going to get to showdown so often. Yeah, and rainbow on the flop, so no chance of somebody flushing out. <laughs> We've seen some of those heartbreak hands in the past, haven't we? Of course. Oh, man. How brutal is that? I don't care. Eric just going to. And again, uh, excuse me, uh, Kevin with a bet of 80,000. We've seen these two just be so cautious with each other that would be uh, really stunned to see somebody try to make a move here, but who knows? Yeah, I think it's just going to just gonna call. call. I don't think we're going to see a ton more action. That should cool things off. in the center right now. Check. Check, check. Another seven rolls off. Now they would chop with any king, so they really don't have anything but bluff catchers. And the showdown brings the second chop pot between these two, right? Now that other one where the uh, the straight showed up on the board, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep, lots of tip toeing around between those two too, also. Do you feel like anyone at this final table is? Playing markedly better than everyone else, or would you say everyone's doing a really nice job with the uh, the chip <coughs> stacks that they have to work with? Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's they've all been doing really well. Um, you've seen Eric make a couple of really good laydowns. Uh, Jake with the great check raise bluff against Tony. Uh, Robert with that big bluff just a minute ago. An overbet for value from Kevin. So, yeah, I mean, we've seen, and Tony's scooping up all the money with the big hands. So, yeah, they're all playing great. Kevin here, first to go on the hijack, king four of hearts. Concerned about the cards. <laughs> Kevin opens the min raise to eighty thousand, king four of hearts, and that's good enough. Just joining us, appreciate you tuning in. Five players remain. Next person to walk gets sixty-one thousand six hundred and eighty-five dollars. Then it goes up to eighty-five thousand eight hundred, followed by one hundred and twenty-two thousand for third, one hundred and seventy-seven thousand for second, and first prize, fifteen thousand dollar seat into the WPT Tournament of Champions, as well as the prize pool, two hundred and seventy-nine thousand two hundred and seventy dollars total haul on that. So, really, some uh, some big money up for grabs here and a couple of hundred thousand dollars between the next person to go and the person that will walk away the winner from this final table. And on top of that, a couple of cool storylines with Eric trying to go back to back here. He won this tournament last year. He was the player of the year last year. Jake was very close to getting player of the year last year. Tony is going for his second WPT title. Jake has been Cinderella a bunch of times, has not come through. Wait, that's not the right analogy. <laughs> no, no, Cinderella was the belle of the ball. I don't know. What I'm just one what of Cinderella's stepsisters? You know, like almost there? He know. looks like the stepsister. He would look beautiful <laughs> in the Cinderella gown. I don't know what I was trying to say, but he's been very close many yes, times. The yes. bridesmaid and never the bride. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> A bubbleist, if you will. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. <laughs> 
All right, so uh, Kevin there with a, uh, a seven, hitting that. A couple of queens out there. So Robert still has some possibilities, obviously, with the uh, the ace in his hand, and he's going to lead out with 40,000. But two pair right out of the gate for uh, for Kevin. Yeah, Robert is going to have the best hand most of the time with ace eight on that flop, line versus line. Six rolls off, so Kevin probably still feeling pretty good about his hand. I would imagine Robert does also. Seventy thousand. The bet there from Kevin. Ace eight is uh, very often still the best hand here. So make the call. Three hundred and forty thousand in the center right now. Another six rolls off. This is a very interesting spot. Yeah, so queens and sixes with an ace for Robert. A oh. check from him and a check from Kevin as well. And Kevin going to take it down with the best hand, 340,000. You can get value at ace high and king high some portion of the time there. But Kevin likes to just check back and take the pop. So Jake being uh, kind of far and away the shortest stack, but he, he has played great. That king nine bluff was pretty special. And he's still got enough chips to fight. Tony, first to make a move here, eight five. Offsuit in the hijack. Let it go. Eric, pretty ugly starting hand there. Same thing for Robert. 8-3 for each. Kevin in the small blind with Jack-10 offsuit. With 635,000 in Jake's stack, uh, I think Kevin's probably just going to shove. And he does. Doesn't feel that great risking that much with Jack high. Yeah, Jake still has the best of it right now, so. <laughs> thought about it, but man, tough to uh, to call off your tournament life. Yeah. Hand like King Six. There are, there's Ace Six, and there are a bunch of Kings bigger that dominate you and just calling it off is just a gross feeling with the bad hand king six is probably pretty close to the minimum good call right there so jake right now five hundred and ninety five thousand in chips just 15 big blinds will he once again be the cinderella bridesmaid <laughs> <laughs> When are you starting to get nervous? When, when your blind count gets to what? Are you starting to go, oh boy, it's just time to start jamming here. Got to, got to do something. Yeah, nervous is kind of a weird word because those those stacks are a little bit easier to play. Your decisions are pretty easy because uh, you've seen them so many times. Uh, so you, the danger zone is like w when you just don't you don't have enough chips to where you can three bet a raise and then fold if. Y if you get more heat, you know, yeah. so that's probably around the 20 big blind mark. Could go here, right? Yeah, it's going to go in for sure. There he goes. And let's see what Tony wakes up with. Nine, four. And that'll do That's not, it's not a <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Weird combo.
camaraderie, but I hate you sort of thing going on between these two is really quite entertaining. Yeah. What's the card that looks like? Real difficult. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Discussing what hands Tony was going to call it off with there. It's interesting that Tony wants to give that information away. <laughs> I mean, it's not entirely truthful, so <laughs> I guess it's fine. And a tight fold from Robert there with an ace, only five handed. Eighty thousand is the raise and quick fold. Jake. Eighty from Kevin on the cutoff and Eric has seven deuce in the big blind, so it's going to get through. WPT, Rolling Thunder, main event, final table. Coming to you live from Thunder Valley Casino, Lincoln, California, just outside of Sacramento. Thanks for being with us, Dave Fair, Tyler Patterson. They just roll everything up here that I'm supposed to say. It's really <laughs> quite convenient. Yeah, it's, nice. it's almost it's like, like a, a teleprompter. teleprompter. <laughs> so much easier. Thanks, guys. Kevin here in the hijack. A couple of fours for him. 3.1 million behind for Kevin, who has been a picture of consistency at this final table. Just conservative, except for in spots where... He's confident, just playing some really good poker right now, raising it up to 80,000 over to Eric in the small blind, a jack and a deuce of clubs. And he lets that go. Robert in the big blind with a 10-5 off. He's going to let it go. Kevin scoops up another tiny one. Just winning the blinds. But even blinds at this point, uh, they start to matter a lot when the, when the stacks start to consolidate like this because the blinds catch up before the bust outs. Uh, yeah, you don't think Jake's seeing those? <laughs> Hundred thousand chips out there, just with just the blinds. And he's right, like, Go. they matter a lot. Yeah, is he just trying to catch a fly? Is this about to turn into a Breaking <laughs> Bad episode? I'm not sure what that was. Maybe he was taking a swipe at Tony. <laughs> From the New York guy, Chicago oh, okay. pizza is All not right, pizza. Sure it's, not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just different. Man, Kevin's not standing up for the Chicago deep dish uh, Gino's East Lou Malnati's. Uh, he's not standing up. Lou Malnati's, man, that place is that place is great. What he's talking about. Yeah, Gino's East. I used to like that too. So you don't know how that pizza identifies. <laughs> Kevin here with a couple of threes in the big blind. So Tony raised it up to 90,000 with his 5-4 from the cutoff. Just going to make the call here with a couple of threes. There's a king, a jack, and a 10. And Kevin with a quick check. Tony going to fire again, it looks like. I think Tony's the only guy on the table that's going to open the 4-5 off on the, on the cutoff. So that's what I was talking about earlier, that they, the whole thing could move a little faster if Tony's the one that gets the chips because he's a little bit more action than everybody else. 325,000, the size of that pot going towards Tony. That's, that's not Chicago. Uh, Grimaldi's? No, it's New York, man. Grimaldi's, I think, is it's everywhere, man. They have yeah, them it's just a chain. Now. Yeah, it's a big chain. It's they pretty have good, it though. Like the they have it in yeah. Scottsdale. They have it in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Yo, uh, hey, y'all shut up. You're making me hungry. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> You're talking about pizzas and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Can't hit that steakhouse maybe again tonight, huh? I don't have time. I got to drive down to... 
Oh, no, that was my inner monologue. He was blabbing. <laughs> I, I'm telling you that I'm going to go to that steakhouse again tonight. But, <laughs> yeah, you're jealous. off to uh, to the Bay Area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah another poker tournament down there. If you order, like... Tony and the hijack here are going to raise it up to 90000 with his ace jack. Eric, who's been pretty quiet as of late, after losing that big pot, that all-in moment for Tony, looking at king eight spades. Ninety thousand is the call from Eric. Robert here with King Jack. And you talk about these incestuous hands where everyone's just, you know, got a piece of each other. This is uh, another interesting <laughs> spot like that. Robert on the button is considering a three bet here. And here it comes. Yep. So the three bet up to three hundred and sixty for Robert. This could get dicey. Interesting Jake. spot for Tony. Oh, man, Jake just, okay. All what right. did Jake have? I missed it. He had ace something. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was ace 10 or something. He just threw wow. it. I was like, oh, boy. Pretty quick. Yeah. Go for the quadruple up. Really interesting spot for Tony, actually. Could be a bluff four bet. Could be a call out of position. Could be a fold. Again, that ding oh, needs 10 yeah. seconds, and that, this <laughs> is one of those moments, yeah, where and that's gonna that lead very him well could have led to that fold. That's, Absolutely. It changes the game, which is why it's so critical, you know, when you've got only so much in your stack for, for your time extensions when you burn it all off on one hand. Probably part of what's still tilting Tony so much. So Robert with the three bet, the worst of it, <laughs> arguably. Out of, out of all of them, walks away with a well-timed play that's going to scoop him another sizable pot. Yeah, he had the button, a decent hand, and a uh, decent chip stack. Played the position well. How do you know? Uh, you looked at your card that was behind you, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's frustrated with that one for sure. Here we got the uh, leaderboard. Jake's down to 15 big blinds. Kevin up top with 75 big blinds. Everybody else kind of jammed in the middle. Yep, so still anyone's game, but Jake's got a lot of ground to cover up, as you see, just 6% of the chips in play. So the other 94% spread out, and Kevin's got a big piece of that with over 30% sitting at the top of the heap. But a very, very close one here. Rolling Thunder at Thunder Valley Casino. Five players remaining, and as you see, $279,000. Sitting up top, runner-up getting 177000 and the next person to walk, $61,685. Great payday for a buy-in of just $5,000 for this event. But a lot of work has been put in, so I don't think anyone's going to be satisfied with 61000 at this point when so much is on the line, and through a field of 250, it's down to these final five. Eric going to splash it around a little bit. King eight clubs up to 90,000. Kevin on the button here, 9-7 offsuit. King eight suited back-to-back -back hands for Eric. Oh, boy, here we go. Jake's going to jam. <laughs> yes, he is, absolutely. Jamming Jake. Yep, there it goes. Tony quickly out of there with his rags, and Eric asking for a count, so he raises us up to 90,000. <coughs> Do the math for us here. Yeah, he's going to end up uh, with a decent price, but that hand is just dominated too often. He's going to run into king, queen. He's going to run into pairs bigger than eights. Obviously, or ace, king. Ace, king, yeah. Ace, king is the most likely. But I mean, if Jake were to show him ace, queen, or pocket sevens, it would be worth calling, but he's just not going to get uh, too many hands put him in bad shape. Yeah, so Jake there with uh, 170 coming back his direction. The button goes to him as well, so another couple rounds to play. He's got 19 big blinds. Yeah, those pots mean a lot when you're short. Yep. You bring the wing. Is it actually wing? <laughs> Sounds like Frank's bringing some real wings to the table for these oh guys. He is. <laughs> oh, and they, they called him out for not drinking. And stuff. Now he's got a cold one in his hand, too. I'm going to crush these. <laughs> 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 it's 
Is Frank like a stakeholder yeah, in Buffalo Wild Wings? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he might be. <laughs> it's like he's telling people that how delicious wings are, like they've never had them before. <laughs> no, they're, they're pieces of chicken, you see. They're just they're so tasty with the sauce they put on them. So Robert raising up to 90,000. Let's see if Jam and Jake does it again. Ace 10 offsuit on the button this time. Wow, it's a pretty interesting stack for this hand. There he goes. Yeah, this one's not as comfortable, obviously. Ooh. Tony out of there with his king nine off. Eric out with his king six. Robert mm -hmm. quickly folds as well. And all of a sudden, he is knocking on the door of a million chips again. Yeah, little pots like that add up quick. Actually, yeah. Can I have a Pellegrino, please? Yep. Thank you. Yeah, Frank might need to sit by and show him how to do it. He somehow eats chicken wings with a fork with one hand while playing poker with the other hand. And has I have never seen him make a mess while doing it, no, which I don't no, I understand. Mean, yeah, no, I mean. I couldn't do very, that. Very deliberate with the way that he will only take one small bite every 25 minutes. I think it might be the beard, but I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can eat a chicken wing and not make a mess. Was that know? the other thing that you we're not supposed to brag about us. No, no, a no, full no. Luxurious beard. No, no, no. no that's that's, that's on full glory. Everyone can see that. So Jake with a couple more moves now that he can make. Ace eight, couple of diamonds, just gonna raise it up to eighty five thousand. Tony on the button, looking at seven five offsuit, gonna pass. Eric, Queen eight, also out of there. Over to Robert. An ace and a deuce offsuit. In the big blind. Jake finally has enough chips where he's not just jamming. He gets to, gets to play a pot. 230,000 in the middle. Jake still with 870 behind. And here comes the flop. It's a 10, a 9, and a 4, a couple of clubs out there. So some backdoor opportunities for Robert, who checks. It's about as big a whiff as you can get for Jake. He'll check as well. There's a 5. Has a more gut possibilities shot for Robert, yeah. Yeah. He'll check. Yeah, interesting spot for Jake. Just not a lot of room to maneuver, so he'll check again. And another 10 rolls off. That means that Jake's hand is good. A couple of checks here for Robert. Let's see if he's just giving up on this hand and hopes that the ace is good at showdown. It's check good. and a check. They both show their aces. Jake's got the better of it and continuing his run. 1.1 million in chips from you know just a 575 just a couple of hands ago. Like yeah. these these pots grow fast and if you can just Doubled pick up, up what seemingly are insignificant pots, next thing you know you're right back in this thing. So. 28 big blinds. It's a big difference from the uh, the 15 he was just at. Basically doubled up without uh, without ever being at risk. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So we were just talking about how hungry we were getting. <laughs> talking about pizza. Yeah. Imagine how they feel now smelling the wings. Oh man, that's got to be brutal, brutal, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think Frank's just trying to hurry this tournament along, <laughs> 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 trying to get them all to jam. Yeah. Jake. Oh boy. Okay, so he's going up to eighty thousand with his pocket eights, and now Eric waking up, Ace King, and these guys aren't really that far separated in chip counts. So I mean, Eric has one and a half, Jake has a million. There's 180 in the center right now. And, yeah, we're going to get a uh, three bet here from wow. Eric up to 250,000. Robert with his five and his deuce quickly getting out of there in the small blind. Kevin with a decision here in the big blind, ace eight, elects to fold. And Jake's already deep in the tank trying to figure out what he's going to do here. Does Eric have a three bet fold range at this point? Don't know. If he doesn't, it's a pretty ugly spot for eights. All in, and Eric, with a decision of his own, makes the call. 
So a bit of a coin flip here, but Jake has the opportunity to cripple Eric, bringing him all the way down to the level that he was at when he started this hand. 2.3 million in the center right now. Jake's tournament life is on the line. Heads up to a flop. Here it is. There's a nine, a jack, and a seven. So far, Jake's eights holding strong. Two more cards to go. Eric is looking for an ace or a king. Here comes the turn. It's another nine. That brings the jacks into play. Sure but does. That'll be the dirty one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so even Jake's saying, man, that'd be dirty. You flip another jack up, and he's going to outkick me. How brutal would that be? Final card. Here is the river. It's a 10, and Jake going to remain alive in this tournament. 2.3 million in chips, and Eric with just 355,000 back now. What a turn of events in just a couple of hands. 1.1. Big swing for Jake and, uh, and for Eric. 58 big blinds from dire straits. I mean, we were calling him jamming Jake just a couple <laughs> of minutes ago. <laughs> now Eric's down to uh, nine big blinds. He's not, not dead. So the storyline, if you're just joining us, Eric won this event last <coughs> year, and if he is able to pull out what is now kind of a miracle today with just 4% of the chips in play, then he'd be the first person to ever pull off the back-to-back -back wins of the same event in consecutive years. And for much of this final table, Eric has either been the chip leader or been right there. And now, boy, after just a brutal, brutal loss, you see that Jake way up there on the leaderboard, whereas Eric is going to be finding himself in that same position of just trying to slowly double up or picking his spots and going for it because nine big blinds. Yeah, just not a, a lot to work with. Just a huge flip, just a pretty standard tournament situation that uh, neither one of them loved to be in at that point. <laughs> Robert here on the button with 10, five of diamonds gonna go up to 90. Kevin in the big blind will pass. Jake, excuse me, Kevin in the small blind will pass, so will Jake. And Robert just gonna scoop up a pot. Another well-timed play by him. Next person to go in fifth, $61,685. You really don't have any clue. Eric trying this to make sure that's not him. Right Wings are my favorite food, too. <laughs> He's lambasting Frank for the torture. I'm going to wait. Eric here with a six and a deuce of diamonds. Pass on that one. Robert in the cutoff. Jack 10. Ninety thousand from Robert. Kevin's out of there. Jake in the small blind. With ace four of clubs. <laughs> He's gonna play a little poker now. Calls the ninety thousand. Tony in the big blind. Eight seven. Already two hundred and sixty thousand in the center. Tony wants to play too. Three hundred and ten thousand in the middle. Here we go. Seven and a couple of fives. How about that for Tony? Not a bad looking flop. Mm, doesn't hit anybody else. Robert could take a shot, but that's probably the only way Tony gets any action. Ten rolls off, and that changes things. Robert now with the top pair. Tens and fives, Jack Kicker. See the percentages shift. Checks around, so pot remains at 310. King is our last card, and Robert's hand is good. Both Tony and Robert checking the turn. Just trying to get one bet out of each other. Check, check, over to Robert. Did Robert go for value now that King's out there? He probably still does. And we'll see if Tony pays off or not. 100,000. 
Jake, who had nothing, lets it go. Tony, of course, with his two pair, has a decision to make. Final 10 seconds for Tony to make his decision. And maybe once again, the clock affecting it makes the call. Two pair for each of them, but Roberts is better. 510,000 is the size of that pot going the way of Robert. Yeah, Tony's time uh, extension chip situation is still affecting decisions for sure. He's only got one left. You hear that ding, that means there's 10 seconds left to act, Leave otherwise he's gonna burn that very last one that he has with five players still at this table. When you only have one, it's a, it's really nerve wracking too because it's, it's not that inconceivable that you would forget Where that you're on the clock in a big situation and your hand could just be ruled dead when it runs out. When you're deep in thought about what to do, of course uh, you're hyper aware of everything going on at these final tables because you're playing for big money, it's really exciting, but deep in one train of thought, it, it, it is easy to lose track of the clock. I don't know that I've ever seen that from the tables that I've called. I have not. Where a hand's actually been called dead. I've seen a couple of close calls, but the dealer when there is no extension, does a pretty good job of being like, hey, Ten like you've got to make yeah. a decision. It definitely rushes the action, though. Like, it doesn't feel rushed through a lot of this type of play in the tournament, but when it comes down to it, like, you definitely feel it. Here we go. Eric's going all in, 9-5 of clubs. Tony going to make the call here. So 670,000 is in the center and 8-7 of diamonds. The opposite happened there. Tony, Tony actually moved and then Tony Eric moved called. In and okay. Yeah, Eric called it off there. So Eric, <coughs> nine, five of clubs. Eight big blinds, called it off. Gonna make the call and uh, two live cards for each. Here we go to the flop, a couple of sixes and a three roll out. So the, the nine for Eric is still good. <laughs> Here comes the turn, a seven and Tony takes a commanding Unreal. lead. Eric. <laughs> Gonna need some help here if he wants this storyline of the back-to-back -back champion to come true. And he needs it right here. The river is a king of diamonds and Tony eliminates Eric. Fifth place, $61,685. <coughs> Eric making the walk right now, shaking everyone's hand. And what a good tournament for Eric. I mean, he gets eliminated in fifth. I mean, incredible potential story there with him, you know, winning the entire thing two years back to back, but still played fantastic poker. Just had a couple of hands not go his way, and he's going to make the walk with almost $62,000 off that $5,000 buy-in. A couple of brilliant back-to-back -back performances for him, and Jake still very much alive here with 53 big blinds, 56 for Tony, and, of course, at the, uh, the top of it all, Kevin and Robert, who have been very, very consistent. And now everyone's got some chips to play with, and like you mentioned, Early on, you know, Tony having chips is kind of dangerous for everyone because he's he's sticky, he's hard to get off hands, and he'll splash it around too. He'll make some plays. Yeah, we could see some uh, fireworks going down. Everyone has 50 plus big blinds now. Yeah. Great tournament for Eric. That's uh, another cool story. <laughs> Tony opens the button here with 9-5 off. Seems like a bad hand or you like grimace or something. Robert makes the call. Robert does make the call. Two-handed, heads up, will go to the flop. And there's a nine, a king, and an ace that come out. So both getting a piece of that. Tony gets a pair of nines out of it. Robert gets a pair of kings and a check from Robert. Tony is going to fire out 75,000, bringing the pot to 285. Pretty sure Robert's going to make the call here. Call from Robert. Six of diamonds comes out, and Robert still very much in control with his king, but that is a third diamond that comes out, so we'll see if that slows the action at all. Check from Robert over to Tony. Tony could try to get uh, his opponent off a bigger nine or possibly a king and might take a couple of streets, but more likely I think he checks it down. And we see it there on the turn to the river we go. Another ace comes out. That's a great card for Robert. 
could get action out of a nine now. You hear the announcement there, last hand at this level. Blinds are going up again. Robert with the check, Tony with the check as well. And smallish pot, 360,000 going the way of Robert. So the final four will battle it out. We are talking about the basketball tournament that's on the way, but what about these four? Somebody vying for that top prize of almost $280,000. Who will win? We'll be back in a moment.